Go inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. All right, let's do this. It's time for another edition of Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Well, unlike last week, Rodney, we don't have a uh, Hollywood film crew and production team in the studio this week, but we're going to go ahead and do TITV anyway because we don't do it just for Hollywood, you know what I mean? <laughs> if that was the case, we wouldn't do it, but we, uh, but we did. We had a Hollywood film crew in last week. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris, but I tell you what, uh, here, one of these days, Hollywood, that's kind of what they were doing here, doing something on Alabama football and Nick Saban. Hollywood's going to do a, well, I already did a movie, one movie on Nick Saban, and maybe more to come because I tell you what, he has uh, reached legendary status, and he does it because he's built the best football program in the country, maybe in the history of college football. And how do you do that, Rod? You know the answer, through recruiting. That's where it all starts. That's not where it ends, but that's where it begins, and Alabama just keeps on rolling. All right, let's get to uh, last night over uh, northeast of Birmingham at Hewitt Trustful. It happened. The Huskies, Hewitt Trustful's uh, star defensive lineman, 6'4", 255 pounds. Hunter Osborne had narrowed his uh, list down to Alabama, Clemson, Tennessee, and Texas. There's his head coach, Josh Floyd, heck of a coach. Uh, and when it came time to pick up the hat, Rodney, just like you predicted, he went for it. He didn't fool around either. About five minutes in, picked up the Alabama hat. And uh, last season as a junior, 60 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks, nine pass breakups. He, become, he became Alabama's 17th commit for the class of 2023. They've since added one more that we'll talk about in a minute. He grew up a huge Alabama fan, and that's something that uh, – he was really excited about Rodney to have an opportunity to play for his childhood favorite. You could tell that that meant something for him. All these kids are excited, but he had a sincere appreciation for this opportunity. Let's hear from him. I mean, this is a dream come true, literally. Living, live here my whole life, been to games, drove from the same spot my whole life, coming out of Trussell, going down 459, going to Tuscaloosa. It's, it's, this is a big deal for me. So I know when, when I sit down and really think, hey, I'm going to be playing for the Crimson Tide, I'll, I love it right now, but I'll, it's going, I might get emotional. I'm going to love it right now. You could tell pretty early on that he was going to be a special player. Has a high football IQ. You know, I think he's, a, he's naturally a smart kid, understands what we're trying to do on the field, but um, puts in a lot of work in the film room as well. All right, let me bring Rodney in for a discussion here. Um, all right, last year they had a top defensive lineman that went to Texas from Hewitt Trustful. And it looked like Texas was in the mix. Certainly Clemson had made a push. Uh, Tennessee was in there. And Alabama, maybe just a couple months ago, might have been fourth on that list. Uh, but they really turned up the recruiting heat on Hunter Osborne in the last few weeks, and once they did, uh, you could hear from what he had to say there. Once Alabama offered, it was going to be difficult for anybody else to, to get his commitment. Yeah, I, you know, again, Gary, you mentioned Clemson really recruited him extremely hard. I thought that's where, if you had asked me six weeks ago, that he was probably headed. But, again, you mentioned it. I think when Alabama kind of turned up the heat – on Hunter Osborne. I mean, he made it clear. This is where he wanted to be. I mean, I was really impressed with the way he handled his press conference, the way he handled his announcement. He's an outstanding player. But, you know, again, uh, we talk about this all the time. It's the complete package. That's what Nick Saban recruits is does this kid, this recruit, does he fit into what we mm -hmm. like to do, how we, you know, kind of the whole package. And I think that's the thing that I really like about Hunter Osborne. All right. I, I said 6'4", 255. He might be 260. Uh, but here's the good news. Um, he's very lean at that weight. Uh, yeah, maybe you could keep him uh, on, the, on the edge. But I also think there's a lot of potential here to beef him up to maybe around 290 and play, has, play him as an interior defensive lineman in college, Rodney. Would you agree with that? Oh, yes. Again, you look at the frame. There he is right there. I mean, certainly he has the ability to add a lot of weight, get bigger. Uh, a lot of things happen between the time they're 17 and they're 19, eight, uh, 19 20 years old, Gary. Then he'll put on some size. And finally, before we move on, we've talked about what an incredible year this is for in-state defensive linemen. Obviously, a few weeks ago, Peter Woods committed to to, to, um, to Clemson. Kelby Collins now to Gardendale is going to do something soon, it looks like. But, again, uh, you want to get good football players regardless of where you have to go. But at the same time, to get this in-state commitment on the defensive line is big for Alabama. Huge, huge. I mean, I, I think when you look at this recruiting class, they're recruiting well, extremely well in every spot. I think the one area where they've kind of – I don't want to say it's necessarily a slow start, but – 
They need more defensive linemen. And to pick up an uh, interior player or a defensive lineman from in the state of Alabama, I think that's really big. Several others, as we know, James Smith down in Montgomery. You mentioned Kelby Collins. Uh, and, again, I know Peter Woods is committed to Clemson. I consider that a really firm offer, but you never know. All right. Now let's move on. It just keeps getting better and better for Alabama football. Today, the 18th commit for the class of 2023, and this is a big flip. Four-star tight end Ty Lockwood of Independence High School in Thompson Station, Tennessee, flipped from Ohio State to Alabama. What makes this even noteworthy? He'd been committed to the Buckeyes for a year. He was their first commit in the class of 2023. But, again, this is a situation where once Alabama made him an offer, uh, this is where he wanted to go. Let's just be honest. He's a lot closer to home. Uh, and, you know, Ohio State's an incredible program. <laughs> you know, you're talking both crim to the crim here. But once he got the Alabama offer, he quickly – Flipped, 43 catches last year, 606 yards, three touchdowns. A lot of potential to get bigger and stronger here. What do you think of Ty Lockwood? Really like him. You know, I was kind of earlier in the, uh, I guess it was early July when Riley Williams, a guy that we've talked about on this show, five-star tight end from Portland, Oregon, who I thought Alabama had an excellent shot at, you know, committed to Miami. That was a little bit of a loss for Alabama, but to be able to come back and get a player the quality of Ty Lockwood, I, I think he's an outstanding prospect, great size. I mean, he's 6'4", close to 6'5", 225 pounds, a very good athlete. You can see what he does. Uh, you know, really strong receiver. He can get down the field really well. He's got good speed. So I think it's an outstanding pickup, Gary. Yeah, you see his frame. He's tall, like you said, around 6'5", 225, 230. He's slender. I mean, he's easily going to carry probably 260 eventually in college. Well, and I'll say this, too. P perhaps nobody does a better job of evaluating tight ends than, than Ohio State. They do a great job. So the fact that they really recruited him extremely hard. I mean, obviously Alabama knows what they're looking at, but it also, when you look at the way they recruit tight ends, uh, he, he is a top-notch prospect. All right, let's get to last week. My gosh, it's been a whirlwind. Richard Young on Friday evening with a lot of, out a lot of fanfare. The nation's number one running back just put it out on social media that he was committed to Alabama. Join just joining Justice Haynes. That gives Alabama two of the top three running backs in the same class. Uh, that's just almost impossible to do in this day and age in particular. Uh, what was the key for Richard Young joining Justice Haynes and saying, hey, you know what? We'll be the we'll be the man together, so to speak. We'll come in together here instead of worrying about, oh, he's already committed there. I'm going to go somewhere else. Well, I think this is, again, it's about relationships. And I think what Alabama's done in terms of recruiting Richard Young for so long, Gary, they've done a fantastic job. They built that relationship. Listen, I'm telling you, Oregon was really pushing hard. There were predictions on Friday that he was going to go to Oregon, that he would commit to Oregon. And then he picked Alabama a couple of uh, now, a couple hours later, but yeah, fantastic back. You look at him, he's got vision, he's got speed, he's got elusiveness, he's got the, the, the package. And when you're talking about the top two backs in America, that's, that's a very impressive when you combine him with uh, Justice Haynes. Absolutely, it is unbelievable. And he could have gone just about anywhere in the country, as we said, nation's number one ranked running back, depending on the service. Uh, Justice Haynes up there as well, unbelievable. And it doesn't stop, because also last week, you want the number one safety prospect in the country? Well, Alabama's got him, too. Caleb Downs out of uh, Houston, Georgia, Mill Creek High School. Uh, listen, just up the road from Athens. But you know what? When it came time to choose a college, he took Alabama over the in-state Georgia Bulldogs and others. Yeah, I, I really thought it probably came down to Alabama and Ohio State. Georgia, you know, was in there as well, of course, being the in-state program. But, again, this was uh, a real strong battle with Ohio State. Uh, Gary, uh, Again, you know, you hate to compare kids, but he kind of has that Minka Fitzpatrick to him in terms of just a natural football player. There you see him on offense, uh, just like Minka was in high school, a fantastic offensive player. Uh, but, but, again, you mentioned him being the number one safety in this class. Uh, some people think he may be the number one overall player in this class. All right, 18, 18 commits total. Uh, again, now there's no limit to how many Alabama can sign in this class. You just have to be at 85 or under, but they could sign as many as they want in this particular signing class. And, Rodney, let's kind of project to another top player, uh, five-star defensive end out of Florida. Keon Keeley has been committed to Notre Dame for a long time, but he was in this past weekend for the Champions Cookout. And could something be cooking with Keon Keeley in Alabama? Well, on TitanSider.com, we've been saying it for about six to eight weeks, Gary. Keep an eye on Keon Keeley out of uh, Tampa Berkeley Prep down in Florida. That's been a long-time commitment to Notre Dame, of course. But 
Alabama's been in there all along, and, and I think the visit this weekend certainly helped them. Uh, you know, will he flip? Remains to be seen, but I think Alabama's in very strong position. And we'll keep an eye on it for you, that's for sure. Well, that is a busy segment in recruiting, but boy, it was a fun one. Still to come on Tider Insider Television. Now we move from projecting uh, the future to the current. Alabama's going to hit the practice field later this week. We'll have an update. And we'll take a look at Alabama basketball. The Tide holding a media session on Friday and then an open practice on Saturday. And now they get ready to head over to Europe. We'll have the latest on the Crimson Tide men's hoops team. Plus, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the phone number, as always, 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or you can email us at TITV at WVUA23.com. Uh, we will also check the Twitter handle. Hashtag TITV. Keep it dialed in to the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV will return after this. And welcome back to TITV, brought to you by our good friends at Tuscus Tourism and Sports. Real quickly, Rodney, a personal note, Don Staley, longtime head of Tuscus Tourism and Sports, retired uh, last week. I was able to emcee his retirement party, and he's moved on down to Florida. But he'll be back to Tuscus, but, boy, he's going to be missed. He was awesome. We're going to miss you, Don. All right, Rod, Alabama football starts preseason practice fall camp on Thursday, preparation for the upcoming season opener September 3rd against Utah State. The schedule on uh, – Practices for fall camp will vary. Of course, they'll come out initially just in shorts, and then uh, they'll get into full pads. We'll have a media day this weekend. Going to be a lot to talk about, a couple of scrimmages, all before they kick it off, Rodney. Some of the freshmen that weren't in for spring, and uh, they'll all be in and ready to go on this practice on Thursday. We won't be able to go to practice again this year. We will get some video clips, and we'll talk to some people. Just what are you anticipating? Are there any position battles, any newcomers? What What are some of the storylines that you're going to be looking forward yeah, to? Yeah, I really look forward to uh, hearing about those offensive tackles, how this offensive line's coming around, because, listen, if they get those tackles settled, which they will, I think Tyler Steen at left tackle, probably J.C. Latham at right tackle. Those guys have to win those spots. But if they do and that offensive line meshes, this is going to be a dynamic offense. Uh, I think they're going to be a lot better running the ball this year in terms of doing it with consistency. Defensively, uh, they just returned so many players, so much leadership on this team. We went into last season talking about maybe a lack of leadership and all the leaders they lost from 2020. I think this year we've got a lot of leaders on this team. Yeah, I can't wait, man. So many athletes on the field. It's, it's going to be fun, and it all starts on Thursday. All right, now it is time for Coach Talk. And uh, it is time to talk some basketball because Alabama basketball is hard at work and has been hard at work getting ready for a European vacation, pardon the old movie title, as they will be leaving August 5th later this week for Barcelona. And they'll also play in Paris while on the trip. Uh, last Friday, they held a uh, practice session that the media was allowed in on, and then on Saturday had an open practice. Coach Oates talked about the change uh, in the rules. You know, they've been playing with the international basketball in practice and taking a young team overseas about them connecting, and uh, this ought to be quite a trip. They all tell me that the chemistry's great. The guys that are returning think it's better than it was last year, and they think everybody's really in it for the team this year, and I hope that continues to be the case. I think as of right now, like they're, they're it's a great group. Like they're, they're all working hard. They seem like they hang out more together off the court. They, it's good. You know, Brandon Miller's talking to me. This is the closest team he's ever been on, and he's only been here for, you know, two months now. So. All right, Rod. Speaking of Brandon Miller, I mean, there are a lot of newcomers on this team, but again, it was an open practice. Stats weren't kept, but uh, we had a couple of our folks over there watching the practice and. Uh, he had 30 points, <laughs> and he's six eight. He can shoot the three. Uh, he's dynamic. Uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but he, he's got a chance to be a great player. I think this is going to be a fun team to watch. Again, it's hard to say how good will they be. Only time will tell. But I think they're going to be fun. I think they're going to be exciting, and I think that they're going to bring a lot of energy. Well, I, I think, Gary, when you look at TiderInsider.com and the people that some of our members that were there at the practice, they were really excited. And I mean, they are the harshest critics. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, really excited. Brandon Miller, you talked about scoring 30. He was very, very impressive. I think, as you said, a lot of excitement around this team. Yeah, and uh, we'll see what they do overseas here where they play three games. My expectation is that they're going to win them all. But uh, they'll go over there and get some experience and then come back. And before you know it, it will be basketball season. You saw Javak 
Javon Quinterly in the warm-up. Expectation is that he'll be back at some point this season, too. All right, still to come on TITV, a new NIL retail store inside Bryant-Denny this football season. And next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the phone number, 205-348-9882. Go ahead and give us a call. Get lined up. We want to talk to you, Tider Insider Nation, and we'll do it next. Alabama's first ever NIL team store. Matter of fact, it might be the first NIL team store in the country for any school. It'll soon be open inside Bryant Denny Stadium. The university and Fanatics will partner and open the retail store. The new shopping spot will be open during the upcoming football season and will feature officially licensed team apparel, student athlete NIL merchandise, including customized Nike player jerseys and customized name and number t shirts. That ought to be a lot of fun and it helps out the Alabama football players, too. Sure. In terms does. Of NIL. Pretty yeah. cool. All right, Lightning, let's get to the phone lines. First up tonight down in Malville is our buddy Dale. Hey, Dale, good evening. Welcome into the program. Uh, good evening, fellas. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm excited about the football season coming up and the recruits we got, but I was at the basketball practice Saturday, and uh, to say I was blown away is an understatement. Brandon Miller, Ryan, uh, Rylan Griffin, uh, Namari Bur Burkett, Noah Clowney. I, I mean, this, this is going to be a really fun team to watch. And I expect big things. And uh, if y'all can, I just wonder if y'all can talk about the uh, High Tide Traditions uh, organization that the university uh, put together. All right, Dale. Thanks. Yeah, I think everybody's excited about basketball practice. Alex Booth from WVUA23 was there. He tweeted out some videos. He told me pretty much the same thing that you said. He said it was great to watch those guys, Brandon Miller in particular. But Clowney showed up big around the glass. He's a guy that can bang inside. And you mentioned some other guys. Yeah, it's going to be a fun basketball team to watch. High Tide Traditions, new collective, Rodney. It's, it's – I expect – I really thought I'd get an email – before the show tonight, but I know they're close to officially launching, and this is something that uh, has a lot of thought has been put into. Alabama did not rush out and just go find a couple of big uh, millionaires and say, hey, start giving players money. This is something that put a lot of time and effort into. I think they're doing it right. Yeah, we had a, a really big story on it on TiderInsider.com. Philip Stutz, one of those heading up this, uh, creating this model that Alabama's following with the NIL, High Tide Collective, as you mentioned, Gary. And again, he thinks... It's going to be the one that everybody around the country eventually emulates. All right. Thanks for the phone call. Let's get to BT right here in Tuscaloosa, our good friend Bill Taylor. Hey, Bill, how are you? Oh, good, Gary. How about y'all, Rodney? And you? Doing great. Doing okay? Yes, no, sir. I want, ask, I want to ask a question on uh, how the offense going to be for this season, Gary. All right, BT, it's going, to be, it's going to be really good. First of all, you got the Heisman Trophy winner returning at quarterback. you got a running back coming in and Jameer Gibbs, who's electric, not to mention a lot of other really good running backs. Yeah, they lost the three starting wide receivers, but um, they already have some guys on the roster and they brought in more. I think this offense, Rodney, in a word, is going to be dynamic. I think it certainly can be. Uh, I'm really interested to see how Jermaine Burton and Tyler Harrell, the transfer receivers, of course, Burton was here in the spring, Harrell wasn't. But, Gary, 4-2-4, four, four. Tyler Harrell has that speed. We, you know, we saw that last year, What the difference that Jamison Williams brought with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about that. Now, I'm also interested to see there's a freshman that didn't come in early, he, but he's, he's here now, of course. He'll go through camp. Is Amari Nye Black. He's a guy that I think is very, very talented, a guy that played tight end, H-back type mm -hmm. player, kind of a Jaleel Billingsley type. I think if he can grasp things quickly, he's a guy that I think as a true freshman could possibly contribute. All right, BT, thanks for the phone call. We're going to get to the break. When we come back, more emails and phone calls right here on Tider Insider TV. There's the phone number, 205-348-9882. We'll be right back after this. Former Bama and NFL linebacker Orlando McClain is facing criminal charges in Moulton after police say they caught him speeding while carrying marijuana and a gun in his vehicle. He was arrested in Alabama um, on Saturday night on Alabama 157. He, according to a Moulton police spokesman, was doing 70 miles per hour in a 55-mile-per-hour area. Uh, the officer pulled him over, smelled, uh, said the vehicle smelled like marijuana, and when the 33-year-old McClain stepped out of the vehicle, he admitted there was a gun in the car. Police found the gun in the driver's side door compartment and marijuana in a pack of chewing tobacco. He was also uh, had a passenger with him, 28-year-old Detrick Mostello. They were both arrested but have been released on bond. All right, let's get in our email of the day. Our email question of the day is brought to you by KDM Services, serving your family like our family. KDM Services for all your heating and air conditioning needs. Did Alabama recruit Jameer Gibbs? In high school. That's for Bobby Tuscaloosa. It's a great question. Came out of Dalton, Georgia. Yes is the answer, Rodney, but maybe not as 
uh, with as much effort as they would have recruited him with had they known he was going to turn out like he did. But, of course, now they've got him anyway. Uh, he was kind of a late bloomer a little bit. Uh, really took off his senior year. I think he had 2,900 yards that year and had committed to Georgia Tech early. Listen, he had a lot of big-time offers, Alabama, Ohio State there at the end. But he stuck to his word and went to Georgia Tech and, of course, now is here at Bama. Yeah, and uh, they're glad to have him. So sometimes it's all about how it works out in the end. And uh, Jameer Gibbs went to Georgia Tech out of high school, but he's rolling with the Crimson Tide now. Hey, thanks for the phone calls and emails tonight. We are glad that uh, you got through to us. And still to come, the Knicks Kids Giveaway Luncheon is tomorrow at Bryant Denny Stadium. It's kind of the unofficial start of the football season. We'll have more coverage on that when we come back right here to TITV. Clouds have rolled in, but still no rain here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Maybe that will change, but I'm kind of liking the looks of that. We'll be right back after this. Might have seen a lightning flash there. Well, Nick Saban calls it his favorite day of the year, and that's saying something. Nick and Terry Saban will host the annual Nick's Kids Giveaway Luncheon tomorrow inside the North Zone at Bryant-Denny Stadium. It's the first time back in the North Zone since 2019. Remember COVID uh, in 2020 and last year? Um, they were able to do it when they opened up uh, Nick's Kids Avenue outside, but now they're back in the zone. The Nick's Kids Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to raising awareness and resources for organizations that aid the needs of children and families in the community. The foundation has distributed millions of dollars to hundreds of deserving organizations and causes. Look at that. Isn't that just precious? Can't wait for that tomorrow. We, of course, will be there tomorrow morning beginning at 11 a.m., and we'll hear from Coach Saban tomorrow night on the news at 5 and 6. All right, thank you for tuning in to Tider Insider TV. TV, presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. For Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com, I'm WVUA, VUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. Don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch a replay tonight at 1030 following the news at 10 or online anytime at WVUA23.com or at TiderInsider.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night, and we'll talk to you next week on Tider Insider TV, and we'll start having practice reports since the Crimson Tide will already be on the practice field. We'll see you then. Good night.